See, I have like a slight headache. It's very strange. Something's giving me a little sickies, and I am just never sick. Tell them, y'all. Meanwhile, my yard looks like it hasn't been cut in about two months because it hasn't. Because here was the thing. You could pay for training or you could pay for grass cutting. You can have all the things, girls, just not all at the same time, right? Here we are. Meanwhile, in the kitchen of Love and Light, the driver's seat. You missed the car? Her name is Mia. <laughs> She's a convertible in that car. You can just like unlatch it and you could be sitting at the red light. And you now, you basically just push it back. It's like a five second situation. Really, like I'm not even exaggerating. You just push it back and um, it's very nice. But anyway, the, the point is not allowing other people to dull your shine. If you've got goals and dreams and they don't, okay, too bad for them. That ain't your problem, right? That's not your problem. I mean, you could be a mom who, like, if you're a good mom, guess what? You're always mommying. It's never over. And the thing is, eventually kids have to get on their own feet. And eventually, like, you, that's, it's just like you, um, you saying, well, when I can afford to have a child, I'll have a child. You know, well, we've all heard, like, obviously, you're, you're never going to really be at that point where you, you're ready to have a child. Where you know all the ropes, because it's the learning as you go. You know what I mean? Well, it's the same thing with your goals. If you wait on everything to be in alignment and you wait on everybody to be on board with your goals, guess what? You ain't doing a dang thing because people aren't going to be on board. And not only will they not support you, they'll almost hate on you. And I don't really mind, but I am aware of it. And, um, and I'm aware how setting up boundaries is so important. You better know what you want, you know, or you'll fall for anything. You better know what your goals are and what your hopes and dreams are. This life is short and it's fleeting. And I want to squeeze every drop of beauty out of it. You know? Let me see if um, I can wipe off the phone because... Oh look, Christopher cooked some... Looks like sweet potatoes or something. Hold on a minute. Okay, so. Oh, there we go. That's better. It must have had like face powder or something on there. Which, um, also, let's talk about this. Y'all see how I have some lipstick on today, which is so unlike me because I really, I feel weird wearing it. But I was trying to see, like, was this enough if I was up on stage? Because normally people have on this bright red or pink. Oh no, <laughs> this will be okay though, right? It, it shows, I think it's good enough. What's my sleep schedule like? Typically I get up at four and I go to bed about nine o'clock at night. You like this color? It's Zuzu Cosmetics. I forget the name of it. I had to buy it because I only had like I usually just wear their lip liner and, and coconut oil for the gloss, but I'm just thinking, and it doesn't stay on, you know, but this, like, I put that on a couple hours ago, so it's good, and it's not dry either, like some lipsticks, and you know, like a lot of people wearing those, like, 24-hour um, lipsticks and stuff like that to these things, I just, it looks so dry to me, like, and, um, and the makeup is really over the top because you want to be, like, you got a lot of bright lights on you. So what I've done is I've gotten some little false eyelashes that are like, um, they're kind of like almond eyes. So they start about right here and they come out to the side. And um, then I'm just gonna do like some kind of whitish shimmer, you know, and uh, like a plumish in the crease and under here, maybe a little, I don't know if I wanna do 
maybe a little bit of black, but maybe plumish, and um, and that's what I'm gonna do. But so I have to get the spray tan tonight, and I know y'all are hating on that, or some people have been, but like it's really. It's impossible to get up on that stage without a spray tan, even though clearly I'm not white as a sheet. But when you get up there, like, I don't want a reason that I'm not fitting in on that stage or placing because I don't have this matte tone. You know what I'm saying? To kind of make your muscles pop. So we're doing it. And um, silver and plum. I, I have like a whitish, uh, it's kind of like a whitish silver that could go on the eyelids. Y'all like talking about girly things? And then I think I'll just wear my hair. Um, see, most people have like their hair and makeup done, but it's just too expensive. And I'm just, people have a hard time. Like if I get my hair done, I always just leave the beauty shop with it wet because people just cannot fix it. So I'll probably just maybe wear it kind of like like I do every day, you know? <laughs> or I might do like pulled up with some little twisties hanging down. I think the number one thing to bring to the stage is your smile, you know? And, and just enthusiasm and being happy for the moment, you know, that it's a goal you've achieved. And, you know, it's, people don't understand that, that these competitions, people put a lot of work. I mean, these bodybuilders spend a lot of time and it is, hard you know it's it's different and they spend I mean it it is a sport I mean a lot of these these dudes in there like they're in there every day and like see I just haven't been working out like that but y'all are so sweet you know what I was thinking to myself as I posted up that picture yesterday in my competition bikini you know and there was like not even any negative comments. Like people are so just beautiful in our community and supportive, you know, and and um, I just thought how nice that is, you know? They're probably spray tan with contour. Yeah, I'm not really sure, but here's what you have to do. You have to shower before you go up. My appointment's at seven tonight. And you have to wear like this, um, like a sateen type of robe, which I really don't have. And the one I have is like, I don't know. I hope it's going to be okay. But anyway, you get sprayed and you have to be naked, which, and this dude that's doing it, he's like this tall, like really. <laughs> he looks kind of like the predator, you know. He's all muscly with these long dreadlocks. He talks like this. Oh my! Anyway, so I'll be stripping down in front of Scott later, and um, but whatever, you know, it's like the gynecologist, they see it all day, okay, big deal, like you're gonna scr spray my granny booty and, and get on to the next one, right? Anyway, so I'm going to be naked. <laughs> I just now thought of that, naked, okay? Anyway, and then you have to drive home, and okay, so you have to go, and um, you have to wear no lotions, deodorant, which I don't wear anyway, and a makeup, nothing, okay? Then you get sprayed, and I'm clearly gonna need to put something over my seat because that's my new car. And then you come home and you can't shower, okay? So the next morning you don't shower either, which I don't like, but um, I guess you just bend over the tub and wash your hair or whatever. But, um, so that's how it goes down. You know, this whole thing is, um, it's pricey, but it's not astronomical. Well, I've kind of made it work out for myself, but um, the suit, I got at a very, very reasonable price. Some of these bathing suits people are wearing like $1,500. It's insanity. It's what it is. But I mean, I guess if you're like a pro at that and that's what you're doing, then you put more money in it. But anyway, I'm pretty happy with my, my suit. That was a very basic price, and it I think it looks pretty good. And... Um, so yeah, and like you can do your own hair and makeup at, at home, and like you, I don't know. The spray tan though, see I could have tried to do that myself, but I'm just unfamiliar, so I'm just gonna have it done. So that's a little bit pricey, but I'm 45. Mm. But you know when I got my number and it was number 46, 
And then I was telling that to my friend Jen, and she was saying, like, oh, well, four plus six is 10, and that's it. She was telling me some num numberology type thing. I don't know what it was, but she was like, that's a lucky number. I was like, all right. And um, anyway, she's been along with me this whole little journey. I was like, what color do you think I should polish my nails? What, what do you think? What do you think about these lashes versus, you don't want to have, you want to have some lashes on so you look like you have some up, up on stage, but at the same time, you don't want them to be too big because that would shadow your eyes. You know what I mean? I heard that tip on YouTube. Yes, I did. I have been a whole food plant-based vegan for 15 and a half years and I have been a low-fat raw vegan for ten and a half years. You know, I've healed from so many things over the years. I have some videos on that if you're new to my, my stuff. Um, I have healing autoimmune disorders and I also have um, raw vegan healing part one and two, which is a really good video. But I really talk about that and, and overcoming, you know, setting goals for yourself and, and what kind of Furthermore, what kind of people are you hanging out with? Are the people you're hanging with out with, do they have no goals and ambitions themselves, but yet they don't understand when you take time to do some of these things? Who are you hanging out with? You know what my daddy says, if you lay down with dogs, you wake up with fleas, Tanya. You know what else he says? If you're getting the milk for free, why are you going to buy the cow? That's his two big things. <laughs> And he also says that a clodhopper is a person that goes around smelling other people's bicycle seats. I know. My dad. Speaking of, so tomorrow's the competition. Sunday's Father's Day. No, I don't have to wear deodorant anymore. What? You're healing adrenals. Lost 20 pounds since April 13th. Shell. I'll tell you something. I talked to um this girl yesterday. Was it you, Shell? Anyway, her name's Shell. And um the the challenges this lady had overcome. I was telling Christopher about it and Carly. I was like, that's really this is somebody that's gonna do this thing. They just need a little tweaking, like a lot of things. And I was like, wow, she's still standing. And she was strong and she was enthusiastic. And I, we were on FaceTime together and I could, wow, I can almost feel her coming through the phone. It was just enlightening. It's just, when you talk to somebody like that, that is really, they have their eyes open and their heart open to what they can become, it is quite refreshing. You went to, oh, there you are, my brain on plants. You went to the doctor after our talk. You're the one who will heal. You really are. You know, and I was telling my son and daughter, I was like, um, you know, and she had this situation. It's nothing that she brought on herself. And, um, you know, she's got a lot of hearing loss from that and a lot of, like, she had to go on all these narcotics and then try to get off that stuff and then try to, and she's already lost 80 pounds and she's already like so many things. And, and you know, it wasn't like, well, you know, I'm on a budget and I can't, um, you know what? She scraped her dang money together to get some help. And, um, and she showed up like she was ready to receive it. And it wasn't like, well, you know, I'm on, I'm on a budget. I want to go back to work, you know, but I'm, you know, I'm on this fixed situation now. It was like, here's here's the deal. Like, I'm, I'm going to make it work. And then we hashed out a plan. You know? But, you know, my daughter was just telling me the other day that she's um, somebody that's a, kind of a distant relative of ours. She has a child that's Griffin's age, and this girl is much older than Carly, about um, 
I don't, uh, let's see, about 10 years old or maybe a little bit more. But um, it's her first child too. And uh, has had, well, I guess, you know, hard or easy is all relative to, to your experience. But a, a easier time than what I was saying a 